In today's video, we are going on ice with the electric snow racer and we are testing a much more powerful battery. And if you want to see how I came up with this idea and how it was built, you can check out the previous videos we made. So after building this electric snow racer last winter, I upgraded the motor and built a more solid construction. Also, instead of using a 3D printed plastic wheel, we are now going to use a rubber tire from an ATV. All this time I've been using lithium polymer batteries that can output a lot of current but the capacity is low, which means we can't drive around for very long. So to have these lithium ion batteries that can output a lot of current and the capacity for one module is 84 amp hours instead of just 8 is a complete game changer. So I started constructing wooden containers that would go in the very back of the frame. Each bank of battery weighs 10 kilograms, so I wanted to use that to force the tire down to increase traction. I then added expanding foam that I let swell up but put the battery in before it became too hard, so it would form perfectly around the battery to protect it. I could then remove the old battery container that I no longer needed. I also mount the speed controller straight to the aluminium so that it would hopefully remove some heat. So now I had to fix the steering somehow and that's why I made this. So I went on marketplace to search for Schalke which is the Swedish word for sledge and I bought one just like this to cut off the metal part so that we could use it for steering. And now this is just an attachment that I put on the front ski of the snow racer and with this part in place we can finally test it on ice. So that's coming up next. All right, the things we're testing today is the metal ski that I've added to the front to see if the steering will improve. Hopefully it will. But the big thing we're testing today is obviously the massive batteries. They look like bombs. Actually, let's stop there for a second. This is the batteries that I covered in duct tape. Each module contains 196 cells of batteries and the voltage is 26 volts and it can output more than 200 amps. As the electric speed controller can only handle 16 cells at 4.2 volts, 67 volts, we can only use two out of the three batteries in series. Because of the configuration, the max voltage of just one of these modules is 29.2 volts times two of these modules that's 60 volts and that's pretty close to what the controller can handle anyways okay so now back to dice my goal for today is to reach top speed that would be really fun I think the top speed is gonna be insane so let's go No way, the steering works so well. That day I was lucky enough to have a drone pilot with me, so here's some of that footage. Everything at this point was working great except that the chain came off a few times but I was able to drive around for almost an hour and there were still battery left which is insane so I started going close to full speed but it felt unstable. The batteries are mounted high above the center of mass so the stability could be improved by having the batteries lay flat instead of standing up like they are now. But I did some full speed passes so that I could get some measurements of how fast I was going. But then this happened. Am I alive? No, you're stuck with me a little longer. So what did I do to prevent this in the future? Well, the first upgrade I did was add a reinforcement bracket for the motor because the motor would kick back on uneven terrain. So whenever there was a small dip in the ice, the chain would come off and that was the motor kicking back slightly, releasing the chain. And so I added a bracket that permanently keeps it in place and I haven't had an issue since. Now the second thing I've done is adding this massive box in the back and that's holding the batteries instead of the wooden containers in which the batteries were standing up causing a high center of gravity and that's most likely why I tipped over. 
I recently added 2400 watts of solar panels to charge batteries that run my entire house. And Alma Solar is an online shop that can provide you with solar panels, inverters, batteries and all the necessary accessories. And six panels of their 410 watt monocrystalline module I've been harvesting energy with for the past month and so far I'm really impressed. You can also try their configurator to help you optimize and just simplify the entire process. You can check out all of this at almasolarshop.com. The explanation behind the placement of the batteries can be demonstrated with this device. Without adding unnecessary weight we can use the mechanical advantage to put more force on the tire and increase traction. This worked great for softer surfaces as the tire will dig deeper and minimize the tire just spinning without any grip. But on ice it bent some of the studs. Hopefully that's gonna help, it sure seems like it. Now I really wanted to measure the speed but at the time I didn't have a good way of measuring the speed so here's what I did instead. If we zoom in on the area we are lucky enough to have two small islands we can use as reference points. They are exactly 100 meters apart and in this clip you can see one of the islands. And this is one of the high speed passes. We hit the second island at 7 seconds and 10 frames. And because of this video being recorded at 30 frames per second, we know that 10 frames is really one third of a second. So that's 7.3 seconds to travel those 100 meters equals about 14 meters every second. And if we take that times 3.6 to get it in kilometers an hour, we get close to 50 kilometers an hour average speed to travel those 100 meters. But the problem is that my speed is not constant. I'm accelerating the first few seconds and I'm even letting off the throttle before I hit the second island. But even more terrifying is that the motor, not this one, I just wanted to show off my big ass propeller, is rated for 120 volts and we're just using 60 volts which means we're only at about 50% power. There are 196 lithium ion 18650 cells inside one of these modules and we're using two. That's almost 400 individual cells and to put that in perspective, inside the smallest Tesla battery of 40 kilowatt hours, there are more than 3000 of these, which is insane. Inside the largest one of 100 kilowatt hours, there are more than 8000 of lithium ion 2170 cells that are even larger than this cell. Mind blow. I'm working on part two of the cloud chamber and a subscriber recently sent me some materials, radioactive materials to test inside the chamber one of which is americium 241 that's the radioactive material you would find in old smoke deta smoke detectors he wrote me some notes what it is and where it came from and the particles that we're hopefully going to be able to see is alpha beta and gamma but he also sent some uranium glass and he also let me borrow his Geiger counter so that I can see how radioactive something is. But I think we should also try to block some of the particles with different materials and see what happens. But let me know in the comments if there are any specific things you would like me to try in the cloud chamber. And if you haven't seen that video, it's up here. Or up there. Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate it. See you again next time. Bye.